Howdy everyone! Today I'm covering a lens that a lot of you have asked me to test out, the new Tamron 100-400mm f4.5-6.3 DI VC USD for full frame digital SLR cameras. 100-400mm to lenses are super enjoyable to use and very versatile for all kinds of telephoto uses. I've come to consider 400mm as being just about the minimum focal length needed for serious wildlife photography, but it can be useful for landscape work, event photography, shooting birds or airplanes in flight, all kinds of things. And it goes without saying that if you mount these lenses onto an APS-C camera, then you'll get even tighter shots, the equivalent zoom range of about 150 to 600mm. You don't get a wide maximum aperture here though, f4.5 to 6.3 isn't exactly bright. Now, Nikon and Canon's newest 80-400 and 100-400mm lenses, respectively, cost around £1,800 in the UK and Sony's almost two and a half grand. Those prices are obscene. So it's no wonder Sigma and Tamron have quickly got their act together to offer similar lenses with a more sane price tag. Sigma's 100-400mm lens I tested last year and cost $700 in the US or about £680 in the UK. Tamron's even newer 100-400mm lens, which I'm testing today, is $800 in the US, but the same price as the Sigma lens here in the UK, about £680. I'm not going to say that the Sigma and Tamron lenses are cheap, but they're certainly far, far better value for money. I have no idea what Canon, Nikon and Sony are playing at, but they've certainly left the market nice and open for competition. Anyway, let's look at this Tamron lens now. The lens itself has quite a plain design, but it's very smart looking. Its body is constructed out of plastic and metal, feeling a little tougher than Sigma's 100-400mm lens. This Tamron lens feels very solid, professional grade. It's about the same weight as the Sigma lens at 1.2kg, but the Tamron is about a centimetre longer. It's based on a metal lens mount with a weather sealing gasket. Next, there's an indented section for a tripod collar. You have to purchase that separately I'm afraid, but at least it's an option, unlike Sigma's lens. Then there's the autofocus switch with a limiter option, and the image stabilisation or VC switch. Mode 2 just corrects the vertical axis, and Mode 1 gives complete stabilisation. Now the image stabilisation on this Tamron lens is better than it was on the Sigma lens I tested, which was pretty poor actually. Here's some footage with the Tamron at 400mm without stabilisation, and here it is turned on. Now it's not exactly rock solid, but it's pretty helpful. At 400mm I could get sharp pictures at about 1 50th of a second. The focus ring turns extremely smoothly and quite precisely, and you can turn to adjust focus at any time. The autofocus motor is very quiet, emitting a quiet whirring sound without any noisy clicking as it micro adjusts, useful for video work. It runs nice and quickly at 100mm and slower at 400mm and in my tests it was nice and accurate too. Good stuff. After my experience with Tamron's 18-400mm super zoom lens, I decided to check this one for focus breathing. That's when the focal length zooms in and out as you adjust focus. The good news here is that even at 400mm there is no focus breathing. It's 400mm whether you're focused closely or to infinity. Now then, the zoom ring turns quite smoothly and evenly, and the opposite way from Canon's lenses, but the same way as Nikon's lenses. It turns a lot further than Sigma's 100-400mm lens. Now it's up to you whether that's a good or bad thing. It also has a lock switch to keep it at 100mm if you want, but it'll be a long time before your zoom ring gets loose enough to need that. 
The lens's filter thread is edged with rubber, which is a bit of a recent trend I've noticed for telephoto lenses. It stops the whole thing cracking open if you accidentally knock it against something. It accepts 67mm filters. The lens also comes with a very nice plastic hood. Overall, the build quality is fantastic, really. Tamron's manufacturing is getting better and better. Alright then, image quality. Let's start with my older full frame camera, a 20 megapixel Canon 6D. At 100mm, the lens is always nice and sharp in the middle of your images with very good contrast. Corner image quality is a little softer at f4.5 and 5.6, but sharper at f8 and f11. Zoom in halfway to 250mm and the lens remains nice and sharp in the middle with good contrast. The corner image quality is much better now with the aperture wide open and even sharper if you stop down to f8 or f11. That's better. Zoom in all the way to 400mm and at the widest aperture of f6.3 the lens remains nice and sharp in the middle. Great. Over in the corners we see a little softness but overall a fairly clear image. At f8 and f11 we only see slight improvements in the corners. So on the 20 megapixel Canon 6D the lens is really sharp although the corners aren't quite perfect. That's where you'll see extra resolution if you go for a more expensive option like the new Canon 100-400mm Mark II L lens. Alright, let's change cameras and bump up the resolution and look at the results on my Sony A7R2 here. I've adapted it on. At 100mm again, the lens is impressively sharp in the middle with good contrast. The corners are a bit softer at f4.5 and the 42 megapixel sensor has revealed some colour fringing. f5.6 and f8 are slightly sharper and f11 slightly sharper again. At 250mm, again, the lens is very sharp in the middle with punchy contrast. The corners, even at f5.6, look very good too. Stop the lens down to f8 or f11 if you like, but sharpness will remain about the same. Finally, 400mm. At 400mm, the lens is very slightly softer at f6.3 and contrast is reduced. The corners are noticeably soft with some colour fringing again. The corners are the same at f8, although the middle is sharper, and at f11, the corners look a bit punchier again now. So, on a 42 megapixel full frame camera, we get a clearer idea of this lens's power. The middle of your images are always impressive, the corners decently clear but not fantastic. For a telephoto lens at this price point, actually I think the image quality is very nice overall. Finally, let's see about the lens's performance on an APS-C camera, adapted onto my Canon EOS M3. A 24 megapixel APS-C sensor can be the most challenging of all. At 100mm, image quality is really impressive, even from f4.5 and even into the image corners, although some colour fringing is visible. There's a slight improvement at f5.6, but it doesn't get any sharper at darker apertures. At 250mm, the lens's sharpness and contrast is just good at f5.6 from the middle of the image and into the corners. There's a tiny improvement when you stop down to f8, but that's as good as you get. Finally, 400mm. At f6.3, the lens is a bit soft in the middle of your images with rather weak contrast. The corners are very soft, unfortunately. At f8, the corners are the same, but the middle of the image is a bit clearer. f11 is a little better again in the middle, but much sharper in the corners. So, generally, the lens carries itself well on an APS-C camera until you reach 400mm. Admittedly, it's the same with most lower budget 400 and 500mm lenses I've tested. Again, this is where the expensive Canon 100-400mm Mark II L lens performs far better if you can shoulder the cost of it. Alright then, let's see about this lens's vignetting and distortion on a full frame camera. 
At 100mm, we see almost no distortion and slightly dark corners at f4.5, which brighten at f5.6 and f8. Zoom in to 250mm and we see a touch of pincushion distortion emerging. Zoom in further to 400mm and we see the same pincushion distortion but slightly stronger vignetting at f6.3. But you only need to stop down to f8 for brighter corners again. Pretty average performance for this kind of lens here. The lens can focus as closely as about 1.3 meters, that's fairly close for shots of smaller subjects. At f6.3, on my 42 megapixel Sony a7R2, we see some quite noticeable ghosting, reducing the contrast. f8 is clearer, and f11 is nice and sharp. Telephoto lenses do not like bright lights, let's see how the Tamron does when faced against them. When bright lights are directly in your image frame, you see quite a lot of flaring, which looks quite pretty, oddly enough. But the good news is that you only see that flaring when those lights are directly in the image frame. If they're only even slightly off, then you'll get a nice clear picture, so it's a slightly better performance in that respect than normal for a lens of this type. Finally, bokeh. It's possible to get somewhat out of focus backgrounds with this lens, especially if you're really zoomed in. To my eyes, the quality of those out of focus backgrounds looks really nice and soft. So, overall, the Tamron 100-400 is great to see on a market. It's pretty sharp, and it handles great, all while being comparatively good value for money. It can't do what Canon's latest L lens does, but it is less than half the price. Let's compare it to the competing Sigma lens for a minute. The Sigma lens is a little smaller, but the Tamron feels a bit tougher. It has better build quality and the possibility of using a tripod ring. The Sigma lens I found to be noticeably sharper than the Tamron lens, particularly on full frame, but the Tamron has a much closer minimum focus distance. In the US, the Sigma lens is a little cheaper, but the Tamron lens has better image stabilization, and I also noticed it has faster autofocus. Now, it's up to you which one to go for, of course, it's a tough choice and you have to evaluate your priorities, but they're both very capable and recommendable lenses, each in their own ways.